In this second exercise, we'll be covering all of the fill and stroke styles we can apply to our fills and strokes on our canvas. We're going to continue with the same code that we left off with in exercise number one. And we'll just remove all of the style we have here, and we'll pop in another comment to ourselves. Now I put this comment in place, that way you can see all of the different types of values that you can use for your fill style. So you can use a standard color, like if you just type in the word blue, green, pink. You can use hexadecimal color values, which are CSS type values. And another color value type you can use in CSS is called RGBA, which is red, green, blue, and alpha. So you can set the red, green, and blue spectrum to get any color you want. And then you have an optional alpha setting, so you can make it opaque if you like. Then we have gradient and patterns. Gradients are self-explanatory. It creates a gradient on the canvas. And then pattern will allow you to put repeating image patterns inside of an object as a fill. So let's create a fill style. Let's type in ctx.fillstyle equal to, let's put green. Then let's create a rectangle, ctx.fillrect, and we'll supply the x, y, width, and height. So we'll put it in an x position of 100 a Y position of 100, and we'll make the box 150 pixels wide and 150 pixels high. And like I said, you can use hexadecimal colors. So any hexadecimal color that you want to throw in there, your box will become that. Your fill style will become that color using CSS type values. And we can also grab this RGBA function and put it right in place there. And let's set the red, green, and blue to 0, 0, 0, and alpha to 1. Now if I put for green 200 here, I'll get a full green box. Now what if I was to set the opacity to 0.5? Now you'll see that my box, it looks kind of minty green now because it's half opaque. I can even take the opacity way, way down, put it at 0.2. Now when things slide around behind that fill, they'll be able to be seen behind it. So that's why it's handy to know how to use the RGBA values. Okay, so that shows you how to use the color by its name, hexadecimal color, or RGBA color. Now let's talk about stroke style real quick. So we type in ctx.strokeStyle, and let's just make that equal to red. Now what this will do is affect the stroke of our rectangle if we give it a stroke. So we can type in, we can just actually copy this fill rect line, and then under that put stroke rect. We're going to use the stroke rect method again to put a stroke around that box. So now we should get a red stroke around a green box. And let's put the opacity back to 1 on our RGBA. So we get a green box with a red stroke. And if you want to affect a line width before you put that stroke, you could just put in ctx.line width. And we'll be going more into line styles in the next exercise, but I just want to show you real quick that you can make the line width 10 for that stroke if you want it to be 10 pixels wide. So if you look at that, then you have a nice thick line stroke. So it's important to keep in mind that your fill style properties and your stroke style properties can be given all of these types of values. So not only can your fill style have gradients and patterns and all of these other options, but your stroke style as well. All right, now I'm going to put another comment in place that deals with the gradients. That way you can see what kind of values that the gradient uh, create linear gradient method requires. It requires four values. You put the X starting position, the Y starting position, the X ending position, and the Y ending position for your gradient screen. So if I take that line, that gradient, and let's put it in place above everything else here. And let's just name it G1. So if we decide to have more than one gradient, we can name the next gradient G2. So for this first one, I'll name it G1 for gradient 1. Now what I'll do now is draw a box. My fill rect will be at 0, 0. It'll be 200 wide and 200 high. And let's make my stroke match those dimensions. So since my box is starting at a zero position X and zero position Y now, I'm going to make my gradient start at a zero position X and Y and make it end at an X position at 200 and make it end at a Y position of zero. 
So now underneath, anytime you're going to work with gradients, you have to put color stops. So we use the add color stop method. So right under where I initialize the G1, the gradient 1 variable, I'm going to add color stop twice to that G1 variable. So I just say G1, add color stop. The first parameter is 0. That's the starting position for the gradient. And the ending position for the gradient is a 1. So 0.5 would be the center. And I'll show you what I mean by that in a moment. And then all we have to do is take G1 and apply it to the fill style instead of any color or whatever. We just add the gradient, the linear gradient, as G1 to the fill style. Now let's see what we get. So we have a gradient that goes from left to right. Now what we're going to do is add another color stop directly in the center of those two existing ones. And we're going to put 0.5, or you can put 0.5 and that will target the middle of the gradient and we'll make this yellow and, and here where I'm using these color names you can also replace for hex and RGBA so now if I test this you can see I get a yellow portion added to my gradient so now it has magenta yellow directly in the center and then it gradiates to black so you see how that works and you can add as many color stops as you need within that gradient now if I take this and have a ending position of X and a ending position of Y of 200 here that will make the gradient go from top to bottom so if I test the gradient is now going from top to bottom now what if I actually move my box you see where I have it uh, at 0 and 0 position what if I put it at 100 and 100 so let me put my stroke there as well now take a look at what you get now you can see that your gradient is determined at the 0x and 0y of the canvas and not of your element or your object that you're giving a fill to. So you have to account for that. So to get that gradient positioned correctly, I can go 100 here. I can change this to 0 and then this, the ending x position to 300 and that will let my gradient fit within the fill like I want it to. So your gradient's positioning has to kind of correspond with your boxes or your element or the object that you want to fill its position. All right, I'm going to put that box back at zero position for its stroke and its fill. And then we'll put these back to zero and this back to 200. And this will give us the gradient back in the top left corner. And I'm going to make my canvas a little bit bigger now so I can put another box in there. Let's make it 700 wide by 500 high. Now let's just grab all of this code and we're going to go right underneath it, paste it in, and this one we're going to change to G2, create a second gradient. So all of these change to G2, anywhere you see G1, right there, we'll make our sto stroke style green on this one, make the line width a little bit less. We're going to change the colors to something like pink, blue, to orange. We're going to position the box at an X position of 250 y position of 0 and the stroke same thing 250 and 0 and if we keep the same positions for our gradient as the first one you'll see that we get unexpected results so now let's test this in our favorite browser so you see we don't get the gradient in the box like we need to because it's not positioned in the top left corner of the canvas so we have to reposition this gradient to fit where this box is so I need to adjust those numbers to account for the position of that new box so if I test that, now I get a gradient that goes from pink to blue to orange within that second box. So your gradient's positioning has to be relative to your boxes or whatever thing that you're filling. It has to be relative to its position. Now we'll quickly demonstrate how radial gradients work. So we're going to overwrite this G2 variable for a different one. And this G2 variable is using the create radial gradient method. And here I'll put a comment in the top that shows you all the parameters that you need for that. So in this one, you simply add the radius values for your starting radius and the ending radius. So the X and the Y pretty much mean the same thing as in the linear gradient. Then where all three of those values end, the ending radius, the ending Y, and the ending X go after the starting positions. In this one, I'm just using two color stops and I'm positioning my rectangle in the same position that I had the second one I made just a little while ago. So let's see what we have. So you can see we have a 
radial gradient now that starts magenta and goes to black. Now what if I was to add this yellow color stop as well to G2 in the 0.5 position. So change that to G2 dot add color stop. In the middle position of the gradient we're going to add yellow. Okay so that takes care of linear and radial gradients. Now we're going to discuss creating pattern fills and you guys should be good to go with everything you need to know about fill and stroke styles. So outside of our draw function at the very top of our script we're going to put var leather. We're going to make that equal to a new image object. And this is how you can preload images in JavaScript. So after we have that defined we'll type in leather.source is equal to the path to the image that you want to use. And mine is called leather.jpg. You can use PNG and GIFs and whatever. So I have my leather variable and it's an image object instance and it has its source set already. So let's just go under these two and we'll type in var pattern or you can name it p1 if you're going to have several patterns. It's equal to ctx.create pattern. Make sure you uppercase the p and you open and close parentheses. Now within the parentheses you're going to feed it two parameters. The first parameter is to the image object and ours is called leather. That's my little image that's going to repeat through there and I'm going to set the repeat which is going to be repeat x and y so I can just put repeat. You can also use repeat x, repeat y just like it works in CSS. Now I'm going to take the ctx fill style and instead of the gradient fill I'm going to put the pattern fill in this next or my next rectangle. Okay so under that I'm going to put in the, the rectangle and a stroke around it. Now the reason why I have gradient here is I want to show you guys that you can use a I made my line width 20 for this new rectangle and I gave it a stroke style of G1. I'm showing you that you can use a gradient or a pattern that you want for your stroke, your line, your border around your boxes or around your shapes, any strokes or lines. Now I'm placing this rectangle at a 0x position, 250y position so it'll be under the first box and it's going to be again 200 pixels high and 200 pixels wide. Line width is 20. The stroke style I made gradient 1. You can make it gradient 1 or gradient 2 and my stroke is going around that rectangle just like before. Now before we test this let me show you what that leather.jpg looks like. It's just a 48 by 48 repeating background pattern. It's a JPEG and it's just 48 pixels by 48 pixels. So now let's see what we get if we render this in our browser. There you go. Now you can see that gradient 1 was applied as a gradient for the stroke of this box of this rectangle and its fill was given the leather pattern so that shows you linear gradients radial gradients and pattern type fills on your fills and your strokes okay that completes the fill and stroke styles exercise and in exercise number three we're going to tackle the line styles